you're already getting sleepy just watching me do that drill. All right, if you guys are watching this video, I appreciate it. It's not a fun, crazy, sexy, oh, this is how you play this song or do this lick or sound amazing on that. No, this is getting back to brass tacks. This is fundamentals and something I make every single student do if they express any interest in playing riffs, lead guitar in any way at all because this drill is amazing. It's amazingly boring. So stay with me. I guarantee you, if you can follow these steps, you're going to turn your guitar playing way up. It's going to be very clean as well, and your technique's going to be really, really good. So you're getting a nice secret. It's a nice, unsexy secret, and it's called the chromatic scale. Chromatic means every single note, basically every note uh, in music, so A, A sharp, B, C, all that stuff. That's basically the chromatic scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to take like just a little section of it. Uh, we're not thinking about exactly what notes we're playing. We're just tossing all out the window. We're just basically doing a hardcore, simple, boring drill. But I'm telling you, it's going to improve your playing in six ways. Let's go ahead and first talk about what it is I'm doing. I'm playing first fret E, second fret E, third fret E, fourth fret E. And I'm doing the same thing for A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And every single string. And then walking it back. That's it. It's just that up and back. Now sure, you can take this and you can move it up and up and up and do some weave stuff. There's all kinds of drills you can be doing. This is just one of the simplest ones that you can do. It's something I still do to this day to make sure my chops are sharp, especially before I play a show. So that way my hands are nice and warmed up. I'm not <coughs> clunking around and missing notes in the middle of the solo, which no one wants. All right, let's zoom in. All right, so let's get into it. The first way that this boring chromatic drill is going to change your life is it's going to help you with your left hand dexterity and technique. So let's talk about what that is. What I want you to do is I want you to practice doing this with all down picks in your right hand for now. We're just going to try to forget that for a second. But this is going to help your fingers to kind of find the notes more successfully. It's going to get them nimble and ready to go when as you're playing a solo or a scale or a riff. It's going to get everything including that fourth finger, a lot better at playing notes, which is usually something people struggle with. So it's, gonna, it's a good solution for getting your pinky up to par and matched up with the rest of your fingers. Think of it like lifting, let's, let's say your right arm is a lot stronger than your left. Think about like, okay, now we're just lifting the same weight for both and we're making them both just as strong. We're doing that now, but with four fingers. So huge benefit getting your accuracy and dexterity where it needs to be. Little extra tip. I like to play a little flatter whenever I'm playing lead, so train your fingers to do so. I don't keep things up like I'm playing a C major. I'm going to be a little bit more flat and kind of muting surrounding strings, especially the string below. Let's say I'm playing the A string first fret. I'll mute the D string by this technique. You're welcome. Second way that this is going to change your life is it's going to help you with your right hand control. Your right hand is something that needs trained. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how I usually keep my pinky anchored here. Now I don't anchor it, maybe that's the wrong term. I, I'm still moving it around, I can let it slide around on this guitar, but I'm keeping it on the guitar somewhere, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, so it's not attached anywhere, but it's going to move along. So check this out, really watch my right hand as I play through the chromatic scale. Just all down picks for now. moved as I went, that's huge. That right hand control is really going to take you to the next level because you don't want to be missing notes. It's an extremely common uh, problem for a lot of beginners and even intermediates, just missing notes. This will take care of that. That pinky technique is not required, but I'd highly recommend trying to get used to just having that on the board somewhere for control. I do it. A lot of pros do it. Uh, it's good enough for us. It's good enough for you. All right. So the third way this is going to change your life is the syncing of these two, getting your left and your right hand synced up. Uh, so it's going to save you from you know, timing issues of, oh, I'm playing a note here uh, and I'm trying to hit it, but maybe I didn't get to it in time. It's going to really help to kind of lock those two together and get things synced up. I don't really need to demonstrate that. You can kind of get that one. That's pretty obvious. So the fourth thing is your comfort in alternate picking. Okay. So when you start, I want you to start with down picking. And then when you get comfortable with that, going backwards as well, right? I like for you to start to alternate pick, just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And 
that's going to change your game. That's going to help you get smoother and faster. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go into all kinds of crazy little secret techniques. I'm going to save that for maybe another video or maybe my. If you guys want to sign up for lessons, I can go into some extras for this kind of drill. For now, just work the alternate picking. It's going to help a ton in getting you trained to play like a professional. All right, we're not, by the way, going to talk about um, any kind of uh, economy picking or anything like that, by the way. So that is for another video as well. Now, what I'd also like to talk about, the fifth thing, it's going to, and the fifth way it's going to change your life on the guitar. This is the one that no one really likes, and it's because it's really tough to get good at, and it's called dampening. So if I run through this drill, in fact, let me just go ahead and throw some gain on. I'm going to throw a lot of gain on. No reverb, just a ton of gain. Check it out. Here's what it sounds like whenever I play the, the entire thing, and I don't use this secret fifth thing, which is the dampening technique. Watch. Right? I'm going to go ahead and stop there. You get it. See how noisy that was? And if I'm not doing the dampening when I play a lick, something like this maybe. See how noisy that is? Oh, that's annoying, right? Okay, so I'm exaggerating a little bit, I understand, but some players still play this way. And this is going to separate the men from the boys. If you can really get serious and train your right hand, this part of your hand, to start dampening strings. So. Here I'm going to go ahead and show you what it is. As I play the E string, no dampening, I'm good. As I play the A string, no dampening, I'm good. But I might touch it a little bit with my thumb here. See that? So that's a little tiny thing I'm doing when I'm playing. And now watch, the right hand's going to get in here, right about here, the karate chop part of your hand. When I get to the D string, guess what's happening? My E string's being muted by my hand here, and that takes a while to get good at. And then when I play the G string, E and A are now muted. D might still be there, but these two, I'm always two above the string I'm at. I'm always damping two above and beyond. When I'm playing the B string, E, A, and, e, a and D are all gone. When I'm playing the high E, look at that. E, A, D, and G are all gone. And so what that translates to is whenever I'm rocking out or playing a, a, a jam, it doesn't sound that like that sloppiness that you're hearing the big noise. Like, right? You hear that? It sounds like this. Right? Quiet. That's what we want. We want clean phrases. We want to cut where we want to cut. And we want to keep things as clean as possible. And now for the sixth way that this chromatic, boring exercise is going to change your life. Metronome. This metronome practice is huge because it trains you to play in time and it's going to tr help you to kind of look at it like a video game. The guitar is a video game. Maybe we start at level 100. Right? Pretty easy, right? And then, okay, I got that, cool, let's move on. Bring it up by five beats per minute. I'm at 105 now. Do this for all six strings, even backwards. And then when you got that, maybe bring it to alternate picking, maybe switch it up. Right? And you could bring it up as high as you want. We can go clear to, I don't know, let's see how high this thing goes. 218. just level myself up by increments of five beats per minute and I'll just mark that down in my little guitar journal yes I have one I'm a nerd like that and I'll bring myself up by five beats ten beats and as, the more you practice the better you're gonna get and that's gonna help you to develop speed I caution you though I want you to only do that when you've got the first five really really down and be honest with yourself because if you don't wait until you have the, the, the initial five down you're not going to have good technique, and you're just going to be training yourself to play sloppy. And it's going to be loud, and you're not going to be dampening, and you might be missing notes. So really hold off on this last step until you get to it. Really work the first five. You will thank yourself, and you won't have to rework nasty habits that you've developed because you were just too 
antsy and you wanted the, the quick fix right now. It doesn't work that way. Give your muscle memory time to catch up. Oh, and one more thing. You can take that metronome and whenever you've beat it at the highest level, switch things up, play two notes per beat. That's called playing eighth notes. Let me demonstrate for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. Please like this video, subscribe, share it with a friend who you feel like could improve their playing even more, getting some foundational secrets. Thank you so much for your support, you guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.